Oh, what a reading from Proverbs this morning, Miss Becky. Woo! It's a good one. So Jesus says, if any want to save their lives, they will lose it. Yet if they lose their lives for my sake and for the sake of the gospel, they will save it. He says, if anybody wants to become my followers, my follower, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. And he says, if you want to be great, truly great, one must be the last of all and the servant of all. About his cousin John, Jesus says, Truly I say unto you, that of those born of woman, there has arisen no one greater than John, yet, yet, the one that is the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And he took a child from amongst them and looked at them and said, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And he who welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Child. Child, we are told in, in texts uh, that refer to the ancient world, we're often nameless in the big stories. Yet here, they are as a symbol of the gospel. Nameless, yet welcome. Voiceless, yet spoken for. Someone who was often invisible, seen. Nameless, voiceless, invisible, yet loved. Loved by the Lord. I met a child like that once. Amongst the poorest wards in the city of New Orleans is the Lower Ninth Ward. Orleans Parish fares a little better, but not much. Almost 30% of the parish is desperately below the poverty line. And so in such, uh, and so in response to such great need, a lady by the name of Gail Murray started a food pantry named Love in Action. This past year alone, Gail and an army of volunteers served over 3,600 families in that parish, many of them multi-generational. In late August, uh, way, sort of way before the pandemic, I had the chance to meet Gail and serve alongside her with the youth group from St. Christopher's. From distributing clothing, to taking inventory, to assisting clients with their shopping, to stocking and serving, everyone had a task. But their job was to serve. Most, if not all of those kids, had never seen poverty like that before, especially in the Big Easy. Some of them knew the French Quarter. All of them knew about beignets and Café du Monde, right? But not the Ninth Ward. It was hot. It was almost always frantic at love and action. But Miss Gale was insistent that volunteers 
would be about making connections with the folks they served. She encouraged us all to steer, steer them towards uh, the protein and the fresh uh, produce, fresh vegetables, even though cans of beans and potted meat and crackers were the most sought after items. Shelf stable products flew off the shelves and that happened for lots of reasons. Those who got there first uh, often made off with a king's share of the canned goods, which left the rest of the folks with baskets full of leeks, plums, and brown bananas, which often had them asking us, what am I going to do with these? Frozen cakes and bread or take one, get five free, and the meat? Uh, well, let's just say the meat was there. Late afternoon, after most of the stuff had been picked through, a young kid uh, made it through the line, and he was picking up stuff uh, for his family, for his grandma. He had his little brother with him, and they had these huge smiles on their faces as the volunteers just sort of stacked as much as they could into this shopping cart, not thinking about how these kids were going to make it home on their bikes with all of this stuff. And Miss Gale, Miss Gale knew them, and she went up and she talked to them. And I could see as she was talking to them that their, their, their smiles got wider and wider and that's because uh, she mentioned that there were plums that day that had come off the truck and that they were to, to make their way towards me. The older brother reached into this well-worn crate and pulled out a piece of fruit that once resembled a plum, but was more the consistency of jelly. After having sat out at the bottom of the crate in the hot Louisiana sun for the better part of the day, and my jaw dropped to the table as I tried but couldn't get out the word no fast enough. And the boy saw my expression and immediately became self-conscious. And I did too. Still, despite what have, must have been a most wretched look on my face, he reached back into the crate and got something for his younger brother. And then he shielded him from me while his brother enjoyed what a million other people would have called spoiled. And I could see Miss Gale over there. She was taking this encounter in and she came up and she knelt in front of those boys and without saying a word, she pulled them to her and embraced them. And as this was unfolding before me, I knew that this was going to be a teaching moment for me. I was totally frozen in that moment. And her eyes were gently closed. Her chin was on the youngest's shoulder. And then... And then they opened. And those brown, brown eyes told me this. This is what compassion is. This is what presence is. This is what hunger really looks like. This is why we serve. 
These are they who are often forgotten, but now are seen. These are the nameless, voiceless ones that have every beat of Christ's heart. And they are most welcome here. And this is how you welcome them. Trust me, those eyes said all of that and much more. And for the rest of the day, I was behind that produce line handing out overripe bananas. And I was often in my thoughts, despite the banana mush that was all over my arms. I was trying to process what I was seeing, what I was doing, and what I was encountering. And the people who showed up at Love in Action often called me out of myself. And they did this in in the most simplest of ways. They asked me who I was, where I was from, and what I was doing here. And I'd reply, And invariably, they'd reply uh, back, bless your heart. Bless your heart in a good way, right? What I realized after that experience is that what Miss Gwen had created in that community was really special. Something not just solely for the distribution of goods and services, but a way uh, to really put love into action. And so love in action continues to be a sanctifying presence within Orleans Parish. It exists to do what our Lord commands by putting love into action and not having them remain side by side. And it does this through service. And when you find yourselves in environments like that, which I assume most of you do, doesn't it just amaze you? Doesn't it just amaze you on how the gospel comes to life? Real life. The same people that we hear about in scriptures are still with us today. And I can't help but think about our identity here at St. Luke's. Uh, The tag that says, with arms wide open. Coming of age in the 90s, that statement brings to mind a creed song. But I assume, though, that what you mean by with arms wide open, that what we mean, is that we hear love with arms wide open and that as part of our identity, we are to take that love out into the world and put it into action. So loving service then can be as big as Bartlesville and maybe bigger. There's a sign in my kitchen that says, spread joy and spread love. Teresa put that there, not me. She's always putting messages of love up for us to read. And I thought to myself, what a better way than to offer a welcome in the name of our Lord than through acts of witness, service, and kindness, both great and small. And we know that small gestures end up being great catalysts sometimes. And I trust that many of you know that as you are already committed to loving service. And so you can be assured that that is the kind of love that once offered over and over and over and over again becomes what is known as a sanctifying presence within the community. And so I encourage you to continue to use Jesus' invitation of welcome this week 
in a way and perhaps uh, that you haven't done before. Or maybe in a way that you've been thinking about for, for a while, but just haven't done yet. It's time. Who knows? You might just hear, bless your heart. <laughs>